You've all heard about the latest Next.js version and their awesome server-side components. Have you had a play yet? I know I have been fighting and playing and fighting for the last few days over it. And I thought it was really, really interesting. And I just thought I'd share a simple example of, of how to get it working. I really like how it simplifies it, but there are some challenges to it. And let's discuss in that video and we'll do a quick form example as well. So the first thing we're going to do is create a Next.js project and we can call it server components. We could just call it video, video example. Here we go. Shall we use TypeScript? We'll say no to this, but I do love TypeScript. We'll use ESLint. Yes, we'll use Tailwind. We will use the source directory and the fancy app router, and we won't do any custom imports for now. So while that's running, let's talk about server actions and mutations, as you can see on my screen behind me. Server actions are asynchronous functions that are executed on the server. They can be used in server and client side components to handle form submissions, data mutations, which is pretty cool. In Next.js, by default, it'll be a server component. However, you cannot guarantee that because someone could put use client at the top. So it's better to put use server at the top, as you can see here, if it is, needs to be run only on the server. And then that way, you can make sure that there's no variables or information exposed. Let me just type in my password for Git. This is because I use GPG keys. You won't have that issue. So now let's go into our new project, which we called video example. Let's open our favorite VS code editor. Now let's open our favorite code editor, VS code. You get your node modules, you get a public directory, and you get your source directory as well. Here you've got a layout and the page, and then you create subfolders underneath that. We're gonna keep this really simple in this example. So what I think we should do, the best thing to do at the beginning is run uh, the project, just make sure it all works okay. So we're gonna see the default Next.js uh, project. Let's have a look. Let's open that in localhost 3000. Let's bring this over here. Yeah, you're familiar with that. You recognize it. And then let's go and remove all that content on the page. Get it nice and clean. I wish they gave an option just to say, you know, use default page and stuff, and then you get a choice because you get all, all these things as well that we probably don't want as well. So we've removed that, let's remove that import. We'll spend a few minutes just tidying up. Do you do this when you first start your project? Global CSS, let's remove, we'll leave Tailwind there because we do want to use Tailwind. I think that's basically it. In the layout, I think that looks okay. We're gonna need that in a minute as well, so we'll leave that open. So what I suggest we do first is just to get a form up on the page. So what I'm gonna do with for this is I'm going to, let's refresh the page, it's a blank page, it's what we expect. We could even just you know put a H1 in there if we wanted to, just to, to do a test. Um, and we should see it all appear on the page. There you go, you can see it there. So let's just use a Tailwind component, just one of their example forms we can copy and paste it in. Again, this is not so important because we just want a form and then rather than create it ourselves, let's just pick in a sign in or registration. We can go to code and let's just grab what we need. So this is what they say we need to do. We need to add this require. So let's add that to our Tailwind configuration plugins. Save that, okay, done. We probably need to also install this as a dependency as well, I'm pretty sure. Let me stop that. Uh, npm install Tailwind Forms, let that run, looks good. And the next thing we wanna do is they also say to add to your HTML tag, let's add this. Okay, we can do that again, we don't mind the layout too much. We just want a form to, to work for this example, but we want it to look the, the same as the example that they give. So I will add this. What have they said? Add the class H4. So we can just add this to the existing class. What we usually do here is you would use a utility a function to join the classes together, but I'm just gonna, do a dirty example. It's not what I'll do for a real project, but it's what we can do for here now. There we go, that will work and it will concatenate them into a string as well. So next we wanna actually grab this part underneath. Let's grab that and add it to our page. We'll remove the, the test H1 that we put in if I hit save. And now if we go to the app, oh, we probably need to restart it. It's not running at the moment. So npm run dev. Give that a moment to start. Hopefully I haven't forgotten anything. Give that a moment and then give it a refresh. It's taking a moment to load, it's compiling, okay. 
Oh, we've got a class. I copied and pasted something badly. Aha, class. Class name for React. Okay, let's try again. I don't know why I stopped it, probably didn't need to. Let's see, there we go. So now we've got this um, page layout. It's not vertically centered. I think we messed something up somewhere. Again, it's not the end of the world for this example. If we want to be really you know, pedantic, then we can check. I think I've got all of that. Maybe the main is breaking it. But again, that's fine for this example. We've got a form and that's what we want. Okay, so let's head back to this form. So I'm gonna do an inspect so I can bring up the console. Let's clear the console. So what we wanna do now is have a server-side component. So what we can do is we can create a new file. I like to call it action. And we'll call it action.js, not ts. And here we can export a function. So export default. It needs to be an async function. It will give you an error if it's not. Are well, they giving us some examples here? We would just say data. Or it's usually form data that comes through. And then we will close off the function. And then what we can do is we can do a console log for form data. But to be honest, that's going to be have extra information in there. So we could do a get. And we can say we want to get the email and we want to get the password. Thank you very much, Copilot. I think it looks okay. What are we missing? Oh, bracket. Sometimes with Copilot, you don't get all the code, but you get enough. There we go. So you've got that function. Then all you need to do is on the form in the action is actually just put in the function that you want to call. So in this case, we want to call action. I want to hit enter. It's going to include it at the top because it's in the same directory. So if I click on this, it goes straight to this file. That looks good. And I've hit save. There's none of this kind of prevent default and all that sorts of stuff. So let me clear the console. Let's start again and have a look, give a refresh. What have we got? Aha, we've got an error. So I remembered the async, but do you know what I forgot? So there is one thing I missed and I forgot to put use server at the top to force it to run server side. So I say use server. Again, page hasn't got anything. We could put use client at the top, especially if you want certain user interaction, you want to use say use state or any React specific components that are only for the client side, you need to put use client. And we can add that in a moment and show you the difference as well. So let me clear this. Let's start again. And we should have a form. There we go. So email address a at b.com, what's the om, dot com. And then if we go to password, we'll just say a, b, c, d, e, f. I think I typed G. And if I hit submit, get. Why did that not work? Well, to debug this, what I recommend is we remove the get that I thought it was a form data coming through and we will just console log the entire variable and then we can have a look and see what we've got. I'm sure I've just missed something. So let's have a look and see. So if I clear the console, don't save the password, refresh. Let's start again, clear that as well. So we can say a at b.com, a, b, c, d, e, f, g. How do you debug? So now I've submitted it, so that's kind of gone through. There's no errors, no page reload, nothing, because we haven't asked it to do any action after that. But you can see here, we have got form data, and we have got name, a at b.com, and we've got the password. I kind of missed a G and typed H, but you get the idea. So that looks good, and that looks like form data to me. So I'm curious to know why the get did not work. Get email. We did call it email in the form. Let's have a look. Yes, we did. I want to try it again. Let's see. No, we don't want to save it. Submit. Oh, and that did work that time. What did I type before? I have to go back through the video and find out what I typed. Did I type something badly? And we'll get password. And then we'll try and fill out the form again. I can just hit submit actually. I didn't even need to fill it out again because the, the page um, doesn't completely reload. It just changes the parts that it needs of the code. So if I go to the console log, let me hit submit. Maybe I do need to refresh the page again. A at b.com. You know what, if you don't believe me, let me do e at d.com and we'll say a, a, b, 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 b. Submit. Oh, we've got another error. So we did get the data through, but it's not happy about something. Cannot specify ink type or method. Ah, okay. So that's fine. So this is what we copied and pasted, which is why copy and paste is usually quite bad. What from Tailwind? So let's try that again now. And no, we don't want to save that. Hit submit. 
There we go, we have no error. Do read the error messages, they do help most of the time. And you can see this is the email and this is the password. So that's looking good. You've now got this happening on the server side. So here you could connect to your database. You could say um, connect to DB, not DN, DB. And you could do what you needed to do to save that information, which I think is awesome. It makes it a lot easier to get the front end and back end talking to each other. It does blur the lines a lot. Some libraries are gonna have to adapt and we're gonna have to adapt as well. I did mention you could put this use client as well. So the difference is if I said use client and then over here put in a console log and just said here, here in browser and hit save and go to this and we just clear all this stuff, refresh the page and you can see here in browser is happening in the browser because this is use client as well. But let me know what you think of this video. Let me know what you think of Next.js 14 app router and the server side components. I'm still learning, exploring it. I wanted to share with you what I learned in the last couple of days. I still got lots more to learn. Come and geek out with me in open source in the open source community, Eddie Hub. Link in the description below. I'll see you there.